Welcome back to another episode of Bellcast, and this show is brought to you by Barbell Brigade. And this segment is called Dear Barton Geo, where you guys submit a bunch of stories, questions, comments, anything that you want us to talk about. And I really want to acknowledge the courage that it takes to be this vulnerable and to share these personal stories with us for yeah. all of us to explore and learn from. Yeah, create a community of just um, learning, which yeah. I absolutely love. And I think it's awesome because we all get to talk and share about all these things together. And uh, what's our first story? Yeah. Thank you, everyone, for submitting the titles. It was a hard one to pick. But yeah. I think Dear Barton Geo kind of like encompassed everything that we wanted to do. Yeah. Um. Okay. So and the it first, feels more personal, too. It does, right? Yeah. Like, dear, dear diary. Dear Santa Claus. Exactly. <laughs> Two different ways. <laughs> well, to don't be it. asking us for presents because I might just get it. Because I don't. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so ask us. No, don't ask us. Okay. Ready? Mm -hmm. Okay. How do you find a sense of moving forward? Like you've hit the lowest of lows and you are stuck. You don't know how to move forward or what to do. Oh, this person sounds like they're in a bad place. Yeah. So, um, I've, I had a friend, a personal friend that I think that was kind of in the same place. And, uh, I thought that by having goals, like actual physical goals that would help. But I was talking with Joe with this and, uh, what Joe told me that cause we're all at a dinner table, what he said that I'm like, Oh shoot, that's even deeper. He goes, you need to find purpose. Because I think because I know what my purpose is, if I'm ever stuck in a rut, like I know I'm trying to spread positivity and love with Barbell Brigade. your purpose. Yeah. And with Barbell Brigade, I'm trying to get people to take, uh, take on more physical challenges because when you're able to break through what you thought, what you weren't able to break through, you build confidence, self-esteem, and you have this momentum that you can apply to life. So there's purpose in all the things that I do. But sometimes you're just kind of stuck in a rut because then you're like, well, how does that manifest in the brand? Or I feel like I've been making the same videos or, you know, like in the, in, so I think, but setting goals, like, well, how about we come out with three more flavors with the current pre-workout or what supplements are coming out? So for me, that's enough to get me moving forward. But if you don't even have a purpose yet, those goals are useless. Yeah. Cause it's like, well, it's like saying, well, set a goal, like set how much uh, money you want to make next year. And he goes, but why do I want to make that money? Right. So I think that's a deep, deep rooted problem that not just you, but a lot of people have where they're they're in a position and then they're like, man, like, what's the point of doing this? I don't get it. Aren't we all going to just die anyways? Yeah, it's like this ex this ex the ex this sensual. No, God, I haven't been able to talk today. How do you pronounce that? I forget. I mean, it. how do you spell that? I don't know. Um, yeah. So it's, existential. It's, you fucking asshole. You're a piece of shit. I hope you know that. Hey, we're just trying to help people find purpose, okay? <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, I don't know why I can't speak today. I think it's because Tyke has been waking up at two in the morning every night. Ugh. So I'm like here and there I and think his, not here at all. His purpose is to wreak havoc on our lives. <laughs> he's fucking nailing it. And he's um, breaking all those goals. How do you find purpose? That's the tough part, right? you know? Because it's almost finding like, why do you exist? And so there's many, many schools of thought on it. And, and it also depends on the level of confidence that you have and the level of self-awareness that you have. So for some people, the way they go about it is what are what, what do I find unique about myself? And when I have something unique about myself, that's something that either God or Mother Nature or someone. I don't think a person that doesn't that's in a place like this could even find anything unique about. I know, themselves. but I'm just explaining the thought process. Oh, because not everyone that's listening, not everyone's there. True. There's a whole varying spectrum, right? Very true. So very we're exploring true. for everybody out there. Yep. And so some people they they're like, okay, what are some of the gifts that God has given me, or Mother Nature, or whatever you believe in has given me, and how can I give these gifts back to the world? That's one way of finding purpose. And so a part of me is um, I think I have a very comedic way uh, of, of looking at things. And yep. I think I'm a, I'm a person that is pretty good at like going through some traumatic and hardship and being able to kind of share those stories in a fun, lighthearted way. I like finding the positive in it. And finding the positive. So that's kind of like the one of the gifts that I guess I'm able to reciprocate back into the world and in both JK, even Kaizen stuff, Barbell Brigade stuff, every, even our vlogs, everything that I do. And so that's one way of looking at it. And another way of looking at it are, are uh, what's something that you wished 
someone would have told you or given you. So this is a little bit darker where some people, they have gone through something crazy traumatic, right? Like uh, someone either that uh, grew up in the hood, got locked up when they're young or were raped or something or robbed. And they wish that there was this service. Maybe there was an anti-human trafficking service out there. So that's, they're taking something that was so painful to them that they're like, I don't want anyone else to ever experience this. I want to put this back into the world. And that's their purpose. I mean, these are just two um, basic basic ways that I'm thinking just off the top of my head. Yeah. And um, but some people you don't even some people don't even need to go that deep. Some people they and not, not saying that whether you're deep or shallow or is even a good or bad thing. Some people are just like, you know what? Like, I love food. And so my purpose is to make delicious food. And that's it. And that's enough purpose for them to have like a Michelin star career and open restaurants all over the world. It doesn't have to be that dark or that deep or that much weight on your shoulders. Like, you know, I think purpose comes in all kinds of forms. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I actually agree with everything you're saying. Yeah. I think the purpose for sure, like your why, like, like, um, and I know that like what I was saying earlier, that can be hard for people if you're already in a bad place. Right. So then kind of going to back to what you just said right now about not adding so much weight to things. It can just be the simplest one of like, okay, um, what caused me to feel this? Like, what are the things or the one thing that caused me to feel this low? And then starting from there and then dissecting it and then trying to clean that up and figure out why it is that it's uh, that trigger happened. Um, I think that'll uncover a lot of things, but you really have to be honest with yourself. Uh, seeking out help is always really, really good because they don't give you the answers. They actually, if they're good, they're not giving you answers, which they usually don't, uh, but they help guide your thoughts to finding a solution as to why you're feeling the way you do when things happen or why you react a certain way to things. That's very helpful. Another one is... Um, there's a lot of really cool podcasts out there that talk about stuff. There's a lot of um, stuff online. There's a lot of books. Joining groups, I think, also really helps, like finding a community. Because when you're in a low state or in a sad state, being by yourself, as much as you, even if you're super introverted, I think that's the worst thing that you can do to yourself. Just isolating yourself is never really good. Because I'm an introverted person, but if I can be around people that I love and I trust or just a community that I feel safe in, then I am I, I, I don't feel alone and I feel like now I have some sort of guidance. Are you trying to uh, talk about it from a point of even before you find purpose, you need to kind of change the state of mind you're in? Yeah. Yeah. Because um, I'm just trying to put myself in that position, right? Like if I feel I'm at the lowest of my lows. Have you been at that position? Where you don't feel like you know what your purpose is and you're that uh, and, and you're that motivated to even know what the next step is to go forward. Have you been there? No, I don't think I've I've ever been at a point where I'm like, like, I don't know what to do and I don't know what move to make. I don't think I've ever been there, but I have felt low. So I'm trying to put myself in a position or in the mindset of someone that just feels completely defeated. Because this person, at least for me, from what I take from it, they sound pretty defeated. They sound pretty defeated. Yeah. And they're like, I don't know where to move. So, um, so yeah. And in doing that, like the last thing I can think of is trying to find a purpose because if I'm already at my lowest of my lows, like I already don't feel like I offer anything. I already feel like, yeah. um, I'm not smart enough to deserve more or like loved enough to deserve more. I like, I'm just at a, such a weak state that finding a purpose is something pretty advanced that I would need to yeah, do. It is because it's almost finding something greater than yourself that you want to contribute to. Yeah. And if and you're like, I have nothing to contribute. If you, th if that's your limiting belief, then it becomes a reality, right? Like if that's what you're constantly telling yourself, then that's what you believe. Yeah. I think also sometimes it's hard because like a lot of times in life, just depending on who you surround yourself with, some people feel like they have shit figured out. And then some people like you're, you're like, damn, this motherfucker is so passionate. All they care about is like aquariums and shit. Like how the fuck do you fall in love with something yeah. like that? And I think it it starts, I don't, I don't think passions are innate. I don't think people are just, bam, I'm fucking passionate for making macaroons or macarons or whatever, you know? I think everything is nurtured. So in your lowest state, I feel like you still have likes and dislikes. 
right? Oh, I don't like mushrooms on my pizza or I like cats. And I feel like there's still likes or dislikes. And I think one step that's possible is figuring out and writing things down is I think is really good because I think the lower you are, the more unclear things are. But even if you can make a list of just five or 10 things that you like, I like cats. Um, I like the ocean. I like the beach. I like uh, chocolate and write those things down and then further explore that. Why do I like cats? Why do I like chocolate? Why do I like the beach? And that's a way to further nurture a like slowly into something you really like and slowly into something that you're really passionate about. And I think when you start feeling passionate about things, that's when you can are able to even start going on the cusp of finding purpose. And when you're going on, I think once you start getting on the cusp of having this purpose and there's like this thing that's slowly starting to move you, that's when you are able to kind of break out of the mindset of, oh, fuck, I'm kind of stuck in this place. Yeah, it's it's tough because it's it takes both ends. You know, it's like you kind of have to not be in a rut to find purpose, but sometimes you also need purpose to not be in a rut. And uh, yeah, it's that that's just kind of how I would go about it. In no way am I a professional. I don't know how troubled in a place you are but that's how i would like to that's how i would like nurture a passion because i know for me when i'm passionate about something like for me i fucking love trucks right if i'm sad as fuck and then a forerunner pops up on my instagram feed i'm like that's just fucking tight and i start looking at the wheels and the roof rack and the light <laughs> bar that it has and has a shovel on the side i'm like damn i wish i had a forerunner and it makes me happy immediately oh interesting you know how many forerunner pages i follow and I don't even own a Toyota. I have a Chevy. And I own, like, if Forerunner, dude, hey, hey, Mr. Toyota, if you're listening, if you can make a bigger Forerunner and you could add a third row seat, I would buy you like that. Because then I could, I'm looking for a family buy car. Toyota or buy Toyota or Toyota? Buy, buy Toyota because I'm a big fan. And no, Sequoia doesn't count. I know you're going to play, but we have a Sequoia large size vehicle. We also have a Land Cruiser large size vehicle. I know. But they don't look as sick as a Forerunner, okay? Sequoia looks like a giant weird egg. Land Cruiser hasn't been updated in over 10 years. Forerunner, third row seat. Trust me, I'll get it tomorrow. Okay, cool. Um, no, for me, uh, since you're feeling stuck, I think the if, if I were in your position, the first thing I would do is completely rearrange my daily schedule. Like immediately, like if I work out in the morning, then I'm going to start working out at night. Like I need to shake up my routine so that I can start unstucking myself. Would you wear your underwear backwards? Uh, Yeah, yeah. The, the ass part goes in the front now. Yeah, I would. It I might would. be uncomfortable, but it might be, but it up. needs to shake it up. True. You know what I mean? Because it's whatever I'm doing now is is making me feel stuck. Yeah. So what's the easiest thing to just start the process? OK, so if I wake up at nine, then I'll wake up earlier. Don't yeah. wake up later because you're going to feel even more about yourself. So wake yeah. up earlier. Um, If you always catch the 10 freeway, here we go. Talk about freeways. But if you're always catching the 10 freeway to go to work, find another way to get to work. Like put yourself in different scenarios, in different scenic places in different groups try to change as much as possible sometimes like, i walk on my hands too that works too because you're going to see things from a different point of view you literally see things upside down yeah literally and then when you see things upside down it you're and you look back in the mirror your frown is literally a smile now right it's pretty cool so i think that's the easiest way to just kind of shake things up real quick and start moving things forward um but yeah i i hope that was that we we shed some light on that yeah, thank you so much for submitting that. Thank you. Uh, before moving into the next question, I do want to introduce our first sponsor, though. Shout out to our sponsor, Noom. And you guys know I'm a huge, huge supporter of Noom because when you want to make a change in your fitness goals, it's a lifestyle choice, it's psychological, there's habit building, there's a lot of things that go into it. And also, a lot of people, they focus on just the physical part where, oh, I just want to lose this, many, this much weight or I want to gain this much muscle. But another part to focus on is how much more psychological benefit it has when you are able to fit into your clothes the way you do or you're able to express yourself and present yourself in a physical manner that makes you feel good and so which is why noom is based in a more comprehensive approach and so when you have when you feel good and you have a, a better psychological state you're able to make healthy choices more easily and understand your thought 
patterns even better and you have a stronger sense of self-worth, which I think is really important. It helps deal with stress and anxiety. And um, because Noom is based in psychology, it also teaches you why you do the things you do and empowers you with the tools you need to break the bad habits it. and replace them with better ones. And I they, love it. And they can assign you with specific goal specialists, depending on what your goals are. And it's a comprehensive and app. And they check in with you. Yep. Uh, but what I love about all of this is because it's it's uh, attaching itself to the psychological portion of yeah. it, 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 ins- it almost guarantees, they're not guaranteeing anything, but it almost ensures that you're gonna follow through with your goals yeah. opposed to just trying to hit one of it, which is the physical part, and then yeah. going, oh, I can't do it. But you don't even understand why it is that you gave up, which yeah. I think is so, so like gonna be so successful. Yeah, so it starts with your psychology, your why, and then then all the things uh, feed, feed into it, like logging in your food, checking in the weight on the scale, and seeing how all that plays out. So if you've tried everything and you still can't hit your fitness goal, give Noom a try. Noom.com slash bail, B-E-A-W to start your trial today. That's Noom, N-O-O-M dot com slash bail, B-E-A-W. Okay, and we're back. So I have another question for you, for us. Um, It says, I'm currently dealing with anxiety and depression in regards to my current job. Oh, I've been crying asleep almost every night for the past two weeks just thinking about going to work the next day. Oh. I did not go to uni, so I do not have a degree of any sort. Therefore, finding a job in a decent company with a better pay is really difficult for me at this point. Not completely true. I got your back. I am currently 22 living in Australia with my parents, and we are building a house for which I have been asked to help with the mortgage. I absolutely do not mind doing that. However, I believe if I help with the mortgage, I will not have any freedom to myself and my depression might get worse. Or more severe. That's a lot of stress. Mm -hmm. I've been applying for new roles and getting rejected due to no experience or educational background. Do you think there's anything I can I can do to help with my situation as I am not going to give up hope? However, I just want to ease the pain and mental damage I'm going through right now. They said they have no experience and no educational background. Yes. Uh, But er, where er, they're applying to things they're applying. But uh, earlier up, they said that they're working someplace right now. Right. Well, maybe where they're working. That is clearly, experience. Well, clearly what they're doing, they hate. Yeah, but that's still experience. Oh, I see. So here's my point of view from, first of all, what you're saying is extremely relatable. Um, I've been in positions where I fucking hated my job. And I've been in positions where I hated my company too. Like from both ends, you know, like not hate, but like where you get anxiety and you don't, you're not, the company's not in a place that feels good from both ends, from being the employer and the employee. And so, um, so that, that sucks. And I know how anxiety inducing that can be. The other part is uh, I want to, your mind to break free from leaning on the college degree to get your jobs. And that's what we've all been programmed. So I was subject to that too. But what sucks is when you think about that and when you build your resume, right? And when you write education and then there's like, fuck, it's blank. I don't have a degree in history. I don't have a degree in marketing or communication. You feel like your resume is already half blank and it's it's a worthless piece of paper to send in, which I find not true. Because there's also an entire portion that you write, which is skills and capabilities, right? And so when people write UCLA, marine bi- biologist they expect that to be a mic dropper but it's not and i'm and this is from an employer's point of view when i read the education part i'm okay cool that's nice i look at the skills and capabilities part and this is where you can get really creative and expressive and write things that are in between the lines that express who you are so if you and are going to hit the the role or the job you're looking for. for yeah so if you're like i am an explicit articulate communicator and i the when i am involved in the project there is never any miscommunication and I am able to go above and beyond the work hours to make sure that everything is streamlined. I'm like, oh, shit, I don't give a fuck where you went to school. If you're that good of a communicator and you're that dedicated, like if you're like, I will die for projects. I'm like, holy fuck, like that's how creative you can be. And if you're like, um, I'm fully committed and if you write the same boring shit, like you're I'm, not a, I'm a team player. Like, well, what does that mean? What does that mean? You know, like, or I'm punctual. Like, 
that kind of stuff. Like if I, if you have, I have a voracious appetite for learning. If you give me three things to learn, I will come back with the mastery of five. I'm like, what the fuck? I need to hire you right now or at least test you or at least test you as an intern because this resume is standing apart from the other person that ha- is sitting on a high horse. Oh, I'm from Harvard or I'm from Cambridge and they're just writing some bullshit. So that's the part to me where like, I want to free your mind of if I don't have an educational background, what can I do? Because these qualities and traits are independent of experience and they're independent of your educational background. If you're just that type of person, hey, I'm the type of person, I can walk into a room and brighten everything up. And maybe you've only done that at family gatherings, at potlucks, but that's literally who you are. I can go in a room and completely change the tone. When I read that, I'm like, fuck, I do need a happy ass motherfucker because in my company right now, everyone's feeling kind of sad. So that's how I want you to view it. And I don't think, and I think if you can really assess all your own skills and capabilities, You do not need to be stuck at the job that you're at right now. I think you're stuck there because of the stability and the security. And you haven't really looked within at who you really are as a person and what you have to offer this world. Yeah, that's beautiful advice. I really like that. Uh, And I do want to add that, um, yes, a degree can get your foot into the door. For sure it can. For sure it can. For sure. Because also a degree and going to school and um, graduating from from specific university says a lot about you as a person because it goes okay how are you disciplined how are you with maintaining work-life balance like it does say a lot there was networking there is uh alumni where they're like oh you went there i went went there too so just for that there's like that unspoken thing where it's like okay i only hire trojans or bruins or whatever so yes that will get you so far but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's stamping a guarantee that you're getting in. I do agree 100% from an employer standpoint. Um, you can Even if you have a stacked resume with a bunch of experience, that to me, if it's a lot of experience, I'm like, well, wait, why didn't anyone want to keep you or why didn't you want to stay? So exactly. that can also bite you in the ass where you it's so stacked to the point where you have like every job, every year you're changing a job at least once, I'm not going to feel safe as an employer because I'm like, okay, so then based on your track record, you're either getting let go or you might be hard to work with or yeah. you're just going to use us for a year and then bounce. Yeah, you're a, you're an employee slut. Like you, you've, <laughs> yeah. you've slept with so many companies. Like, yeah, you have a lot of experience, but you probably got company STD too. Yeah, that's funny. Yeah, so that, so don't lean into that too much. Uh, now, kind of going into your first point about just, you know, crying yourself to sleep every night for having to go to work. I don't think anyone should go through that. And you shouldn't feel like you're imprisoned or shackled to like staying married to this position because it doesn't sound like it's your career. It doesn't sound like it sounds like, um, yeah, you need the money. But I feel like uh, if you can see how much money you need, finding something that matches that temporarily. So even if that means getting rid of the ego um, and going, okay, well, if that means I have to go work at Macca's because they're from Australia, oh, yeah. but if that means working at McDonald's, but I'm making the same amount of money, then I'd rather do that. Cause at least I'm not going to be crying and like having mental breakdowns and issues because this job is just stressing me out and I just fucking hate it. Or I'm having the worst time ever. Like, I think I would try to clean that up first. Yeah. Uh, and then like we were saying, not lean into the, I'm not experienced. I don't have the education or the degree. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't worry about that either. Lean into what you do have. And that's exactly. why that's why the skills and capabilities, because those things, you can be five years old and have skills and capabilities. You can write, I build the sickest sand castles you have ever seen. Four rooms, five towers. There's going to be a moat. And I never forget about the alligators. Like being able to write, I'm like, oh shit, I need someone to build a sand castle for me then. But that's experience. But even at five. So at every age, there's a certain level of experience. And when you're doing these resumes, you don't have to do it alone. Find that one supportive friend, that one positive friend that sees you in a light and and is that person. In a positive light. In a positive light. And there's always that person's like, dude, you keep selling yourself short. Find that one person and find and do the resume with them. Because a lot of times, like, you know, if you're like in, in a bad place, you're gonna be like, oh, everyone's smarter than me. Everyone's is they speak better than me. What's the point? They work harder yeah. than me. 
and I get sick like once every month anyways. Why would any company want to hire me? Yeah. So you're in a bad place. So of course your resume is probably like a... Going to be one sentence because you're like, that's all I got to offer. Yeah. And it's just going to roast yourself. And then people are going to read your resume and go, fuck this guy. I don't need... Or her. I don't need to hire this person. But if you can have that one supporter friend that's always like, dude, you're so good at this and you're good at that. Get, help them give you examples and work with them so that not only do you write your skills and capabilities out from a positive light... But that's also empowering. And now you have confidence. And then if you do get that interview, you can now deliver in person why you are that person that lights up the room when you walk in. Yeah. Yeah. Damn, you're on a good one today. You're giving some good ass advice. Am I? Yes. And then going to your other point about your parents building a new home and then now them asking you to contribute to the mortgage. I think that's something that you're kind of overlooking is that they're asking you to do it. So for whatever reason you feel obligated to contribute, um, it's beautiful. And I, and I commend that. And I think like, wow, like they did such a good job raising you because you don't feel entitled. You don't feel like, wait, what the fuck? Like, I don't want to contribute. Like I got to live my own life. Like that's so beautiful that you want to give back to your family. But I feel like they're going to support you when you're like, hey, you know what? I definitely want to help with the mortgage, but can I have a year to myself so that I can build something? And I and I can almost guarantee just based on how you wrote this, I can almost guarantee that they're going to be like, hell yeah, of course. And if it's going to burden you this much, like don't even worry about contributing to the mortgage. Like I feel like that's what they would say. Yeah. Um, but I, I don't think there's anything wrong with asking for a buffer, like going, hey, can I have six months to build, you know, to build... Um, some financial stability or a year to get my life straight and not to like go back to the number thing, but you're only 22. Like that's such an awesome age to be right now. Like I'm 36 and I feel like I'm still young. I still feel like I can mess up right now. And I'm like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to like completely fall flat on my face and not be able to recover. Like, I think I'm okay. Yeah. So being 22, I think you're like in such a good spot because the world is literally yours right now. Like you can make as many mistakes and be as broke as you possibly can right now. And there real there aren't any real repercussions. Like even if you went homeless, heaven forbid that that happens. But you're 22 and you can even flip that and be like, oh, shit, road trip. All I need is money for gas and like um, um, food. Yeah, you could go homeless and literally a year later, you flip that into a best-selling book. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. You, you become a YouTuber and like do the whole thing, yeah. you know? Like, yeah. so there's always like, there's always a yin and a yang, right? There's always a positive and a negative way to look at things. And hopefully we're trying, we're like helping you see that you can see it this way. Um, it's not the end of the world. And I'm sorry that you feel like it is. And I'm sorry that you feel like you don't have the tools to, to, um, to, to get the life that you want to live, but I guarantee you a million thousand freaking zillion percent that you have all the tools in your toolbox right now to to achieve the life that you want to have. I actually really like what you said about the uh, asking for a buffer with your parents, because I think a lot of times when, you know, especially when our parents ask us to do things, it feels like such a loaded um, request, right? Because you're like, fuck you, man, you, you guys raise me, you put food on the table, you guys support me. So saying no feels like such a slap hard, yeah, slap, slap and a hard thing to do. But you're not really saying no, you're just defining the parameters, you know, like even going with, hey, can I have a year? And even if that feels weird, you can be like, hey, can I have six months and I'll start paying a quarter of the mortgage? Six months later, I'll pay half. In a year, I will pay the full mortgage. So just working out the parameters with them, I think the the showing the intent to your parents is already going to make them so happy, you know? Yeah. And so not everything has to be like a zero or a, a 100 approach. Everything I realized in life is actually a slow, gradual transition. And that's when things feel stable and it doesn't feel so abrupt and so heavy. Because I think you're going from, I already hate my job, how am I going to work extra hours at a job I hate or find a second job to do this other thing that's additional stress? I would slow it all down. First, figure out how to get out of this job because your mental health and your happiness, that's so important. And then talk to your parents. Hey, how do I how do we figure out a way where I do want to contribute, but we can get there in a way where I don't feel additionally stressed? And uh, one final thing that I want to uh, add to your resume thing. If you feel like you don't have the experience 
and you and uh, you feel like you don't have the education in the sk skills and capability part, um, I would actually really lean into the humility part of things. Because if you don't have those things to offer, I would say things like, I'm not above any job, I'll do anything in this company. That's awesome. So if you lean into the humility, people know where your heart's at and you're like, I'm not, I'm not above anyone, I'll do this, I'll do that, I'll do 60 hours worth of work for 40 hours worth of pay, Lean more into the humility part because that's all you have to offer is your character and your willingness to provide and willingness to be a team player. But you have to list those things out and show them. And for me, as an employer, if I saw this and I'm like, oh, shoot, this guy, is, he is young or she is young, hasn't really had that much experience. But this person is the most ambitious and most eager person I've ever met. I need someone with this kind of energy on my team. Yeah. 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 Final thoughts on this one. Um, you did state that you are, um, that you do have depression um wait a minute i kind of missed that part oh yeah sorry that you're dealing with anxiety and depression uh and to that i would say it's 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 okay to invest in yourself and invest in seeking professional help um so that like uh what i was telling our previous person so that they can guide you in finding you know what your triggers are and what are the things that um make you feel this way like that give you the anxiety that make you depressed um because, yeah, they're, they're going to guide you to get all those answers. Yeah, especially if you're in uh, Australia. I don't know what your guys' health care is like. But if you're like in Canada, I believe in Canada, you can get government subsidized therapy. So, like, those things, like, take advantage of what your country has to offer, you know? Yeah, that's awesome. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, we hope that we were able to sh shed some light uh, on your current situation and anyone else out there. Okay, so before moving into our final question, I do want to introduce our next sponsor. Our next sponsor is Manscaped, and I fucking love Manscaped because I've cut my balls a bajillion times using things that aren't made for the balls. Uh, it's crazy, but it's a wild idea that things that are made for your head Shouldn't and your face— shouldn't really go for your balls because it's a slightly different shape and different texture. Yeah. So that's why I love Manscaped because they got the new and improved Lawnmower 3.0. I love the name. And did you know they spent 18 months perfecting the greatest ball hair <laughs> trimmer ever? I'm happy to hear it, at least for your guys' sake. It's funny that they spend that much time on it because it's actually really, really important. I and hate to see the guy, like the first guys that had to try out, like the very, very first ones. Because oh. they're like, oh, we, we, did, we, we got nicked. We didn't get it yet. Yeah. So I really like this. And one feature that I love a lot is the LED because not a lot of shavers have that. And so, you know, when you're shaving your balls, oh. you're just going in, under, over. Sometimes you're in the shower, which is it's waterproof. So you can use it in the shower or you're in the, sitting on a toilet. Like there's just shadows, right? So you don't want to miss any parts. So they got the LED thing, which is super cool. And then also there is the charging stand. So you could just put, plug it in like you don't have to like plug it into some other socket. Like it's just a portable station. I love like just like cordless, my, just like my toothbrush, bam, cordless. Yep. And just like my right next to my toothbrush, I have my Manscaped. And right now you get 20% off plus free shipping with the code B E A W bail at manscaped.com. Make sure you go check this out. Dudes, this is a testimony right here. She loves it when I have oh, I shaved balls. I love it. And uh, for all my chicks out there, if you're, man is freaking bushy down there it's a and gift. just and they haven't done it just go out there and get it for them get it for them and go can you please shave your it. nuts i yeah. bought it for you or maybe even help them and now you have something that is actually they're actually going to trust you because it has all this nick free technology so go to manscape.com slash bail get 20 percent off plus free shipping okay and we are back ready yep okay so relationship of three years recently ended uh, high school sweethearts that got together before we graduated. Person really was a best friend, but we couldn't make it out uh, out the tough times together. We still talk, but they, uh, but the other has expressed that they have no intention of getting back together at least anytime soon, at least until they figure out what they want from life. So my question is, if this person has expressed they want to move on, but have also said they are confused because so much is going on and has chosen to keep talking to each other. Is that fair to both of us? Should we be tested even though this hardest time, even if we are, sorry, sorry, I'm just reading it as it is. So we're, we're trying to figure it out together. Uh, should we be tested even though this is the hardest times, even if we aren't together or should we 
rip the bandaid off and go our own ways so we aren't so dependent on each other. Um, besides this of the Bellcast, thank you so much. Thank you so much for submitting. And never stop being amazing people. Thank you, thank you. Love you, but love you so much too. Um, yeah, so three years of sweethearts uh, ended, but they still talk. And he's like, should we be doing that? Because the person doesn't what know are what they want. What your thoughts on it? Uh, so for me, I don't ever like feeling like I'm lingering anywhere. Like, tell me, give me a definitive answer so that I can live my life. So if, if I were in your situation and we broke up, then I would say, are, are we going to try to work on this? And like, in, like are, are, do you need a break? Because breaking up for me means we're, we're broken. That's it. We're, we're, we're not speaking for at least a year. Like we're going to not forget this ever happened, but we're just going to move forward in different directions. So I need to know, are we breaking up? Are we on a break? Are we going to work on this? Stay together and work on it. So if it's not, if I don't get a clear answer, then I have to step in and say, okay, well, I need, I need, a, I need clear boundaries. I need parameters. I need to know what I'm doing because I, I hate feeling like I'm in someone's back pocket or I hate feeling like, like, should I check in with the person? Like, I don't know when I'm in a relationship, I like being really involved in each other's lives. So that's like, hey, I'm home now. Or like, hey, I'm about to go out with friends. Like, I like knowing what's going on. So if it's one of those where it's like, I don't know what I want. Then for me, I would be like, cool. Okay, that's fair. I still love you and I know what I want. But uh, if you don't want to work it out with me, then I have to give you your space to figure that out. However, I can't wait. Like, I don't want to wait. Um, and uh, like, even if it was you, right? Like, I love you to death and I would try to do everything to fix it together. But if you're expressing you don't want to fix it together with me, then, th then I feel like you don't see what you need in me. And if, and if I feel like you don't see what you need in me, then I, I feel like I'm selling myself short. Cause I'm like, I know I can help you. Like, I know I can be a team and we can do this together. Like, What's your problem is my problem. What my problem is your problem. Let's like fight this together. But if you're going, I don't think you can handle my shit or I don't even know what I want. And even if you're saying like, I, I, um, I don't even know what I want then. And, and the only thing you, you can give me is you want to break up that I'm like, okay, well then yeah, I don't want to, I, I can't, I can't just sit here and wait until you're ready for me. Yeah. It sounds like, uh, your boundaries are dependent on the other person's boundaries and that sucks. Yeah. Because now you are constantly at their whim of what they want. Like, oh, they're going to talk to me again. Okay, cool. Oh, I think they want to date again. Oh, no, no. But they still have to figure their stuff out first. Well, I can't date either. Yeah, but I can't date either. So you're constantly. <laughs> so it's like, are we, wait, are we going to, are we going to, is it okay to see other people now? Or, you know, and then it's, kind of, oh, wait, wait. So you say you're going to do this. Wait, but is that going to take you long distance now? You're going to go over there. Wait, what about me? Am I supposed to keep doing what I'm doing? So if your cons if your decisions are based off of theirs and your life is based off of theirs, that sucks. Then you don't have a life. Yeah. So that's the first thing I would clear up where if I, I would in the same in the same uh vein as what Gio's talking about, hey, you need to figure out your boundaries. I need to figure out mine. Let me figure them out. And then figure out what it is that you want. What are some of the priorities in your life right now? Is a relationship important? Is you figuring out what you want to do in life, is that important? Or do, is that, or is us the most important thing? But lay those out and then you can't waver in those and present that to that person. Hey, I realize that us is more important than anything else. So I'm down to move all of my shit aside, are you? And if they give you the hard truth and it's a no, you gotta go live your own life now. But if you sat down with yourself and you figured out what are your own boundaries and that, that the us part or what they're doing doesn't even fit into your plan, then stop being at their beck and call and start living your life and let them know and be upfront because the worst thing that can happen with two people are not knowing what those two people's boundaries and they're just and they're just both unhappy dealing with assumptions and expecting the other person to do the other thing and it's horrible it's a horrible relationship to be in yeah yeah it's really hard um especially like what you were saying if you don't know what you want yourself um, definitely having that, that hard, true conversation with yourself and saying, wait, what's important to me right now? And if, and if it's just a relationship that's important to you, um, for me, I would kind of see that as a little bit of a red flag because 
just like I said earlier, like I'm 36 and I'm still learning so much about myself and I'm learning about um, like my own triggers and like my own shortcomings or my, my or the things that I'm really good at, you know, and I'm, I'm learning to love myself and understand myself better. Um, depending on someone, that's never good. Yeah. You should never depend on them uh, for anything. I mean, let me rephrase that. Like, yes, it's it's okay to feel safe and and depend on them in terms of like emotional like uh, support. Um, uh, for them being your friends and your partners, like we, it's it's beautiful being vulnerable with each other. Like that's cool. But to depend on someone so that you can feel fulfilled or that so that you can feel like you have purpose or depending on them, um, so that you can feel like a whole person, I think that's when it's a red flag for me. Yeah. So, like. Entering a relationship shouldn't be like uh, half of me is now because that's what you were talking about halves. Right. And for me, I'm like, oh, shit, that's crazy. But entering a relationship should never be like, oh, this is my other half. Now I feel whole like it should never really feel like that. I feel like it should be like this is who I am. This is what I have to offer to this person and this relationship. This is who they are. This is what they offer to this relationship. And now this is who we are. And this yeah. is what we create together. Yeah. yeah and some people, uh, they think that boundaries are like an offensive thing or they it's like a demand it does because i mean think of when we use boundaries it's yeah. so that you don't enter that space yeah but it's like but it's actually for clarity and having boundaries is actually some of the best things you can have in a relationship because now you know how to move forward so even with us we have boundaries right like uh you know that for me divorce is off the table it's the last thing i ever want to do i grew up in a divorced family it fucking sucked ass I never want to divorce you. You, me, and Taika are the number one thing. So you know that I know that we're going to, no matter what happens, we're, we're going to try our best to keep that together. We also have the same boundary where our family is number one. Not my business or your business or my passion or your passion. That's actually number two. So having that, we go into that knowing that our jobs can change no matter what as long as our family's strong. And that's not saying that that boundary is right or wrong. Because for some two other two other people, they might be like, you know what? That's just me, not their thing. Me being a lawyer is more important than anything else. And that's fine. So they just have to find someone else that respects that and then they get it. So now if their job starts taking 60 hours a week, 40, 80 hours a week, 100 hours a week, and they start spending time away from the family, if you already got into that situation knowing that, then you're like, oh, cool. Yeah, I respect your boundary because that's what you wanted. But, uh, but if they were like, Hey, uh, family's the number one more important thing. And then they start working a hundred hours a week. You're like, wait, wait a second. What's going on? You know? So I think for us, we have that boundary where family time is important. We're going to spend at least a couple hours full family, uh, a day. And on the weekends, that's only that time. And so when we, even when we're scheduling things here and there, sometimes, you know, you have to bend the boundaries a little bit. We always check in with each other. Hey, I know this weekend is supposed to be a family thing. But there's this really important meeting. I can't schedule any other day. Can we do it? And so the boundaries and the communication helps us work better as a team, just like how teams have boundaries. Like if you're the center, I'm expecting you to grab the rebound, yep. right? And if I'm a shooting guard, you're expecting when you throw the ball out to me, I'm going to be shooting it. So the boundaries make the plays smooth. Yeah. And just and because and you don't want to have well, I thought you were gonna grab the rebound. Yeah, you don't want assumptions. Yeah, same thing with the relationship. I think those boundaries are really important to lay out. Yeah, I agree hundred percent. Um oh man, I lost my train of thought. Shit. So I thought it was something else. Um let me read the question again. I mean, I think frogs and toads are really hard to tell <laughs> no, apart. Too. I was thinking about this. Oh, okay. And then I I yeah, I just it's okay. Um, and no, frogs are not just shellless turtles. Is that what you're thinking? Because I can see where your thought process is, but they're not the same. Okay. Um, so they were. So my thoughts, my brain just kind of went just because there were like seven different things I thought about when he was writing this or yeah. when they were writing this. Yeah. She. He. Anyway, uh, we do want to keep you guys anonymous, but yeah, when they were writing this, and um. So the first thing that stuck out to me was calling each other sweethearts, like high school sweethearts. I feel like people put a lot of emphasis on that. Like it's supposed to be like this really romantic, important thing. Like, and if they are that, they don't want to break it. Yeah. And it, like you want to like stay high school sweethearts because it sounds yeah. so pretty. But yeah. 
I wouldn't put so much focus. Yeah, don't and emphasis on that. It's awesome mm-hmm. that you guys are that romantic, but to me, it's more important to live in reality than fantasy. Yeah, and it's and it's in it, and I love romance. Like I love love, and I think it's so beautiful. But don't put so much heavy emphasis and feel like a failure when now you're broken up with your high school sweetheart. Like that's okay. Like high school, you're supposed to have fun, explore who you are, uh, find out what even having a boyfriend or girlfriend is. And then college is the experimental years, you know, like you go crazy, you party, you go to college, you meet different people from like different parts of the world. Like, it's okay. Like, don't put so much emphasis on that. Um, And then asking about if you should just rip the bandaid off and go on your own ways. Because right now it seems like you guys are like still friends. I would say... Personally, I would rip that bandaid off and I would say, I love you and I wish nothing but the best for you. And hopefully our paths, paths cross again. But in the meantime, like you gotta, you gotta take care of yourself. And I feel like you just broke up and now you guys are friends. That's confusing. And like, it just, it's too soon. It's too soon to call each other friends. And it's, you're lying to yourself to be like, oh, we depend on each other. We depend on each other so much. So we're friends. Because for me, I'm like, if you guys depended on each other so much, then you, you guys would shoot or he would be helping you figure out what it is that you want or that they want. Yeah. I know like if all my business exploded and I was fired and I was jobless, you would be the strength to help me pick myself back up because yeah. our priority, our boundary, number one is us. Yeah. So no matter how dark I am, all problems are going to be solved with you. But the way you guys speak, it's like um, you guys, that isn't your number one priority. So people are solving problems. Yeah, of it. People are solving problems on their own. Yeah. So I would say, OK, so um, what I was stating at the beginning of this was like, Okay, so I think it's you just need to figure out what it is that you want, who you want. Hopefully, I'm around, and 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 don't say it in a way. And I don't mean to, for it to come off in a way where it's like an ultimatum or like a threat of some sort. It's just being very real and saying, hey, like my life is valuable too, and I have goals and aspirations, and I just can't be sitting here until it's convenient for you or it's the right time for you. It's like I'm gonna keep moving forward with or without you. And again, it, it's not to sound bad in any sort of way it's just to be real like i'm i have things i want to accomplish in this lifetime and i would love for it to be with you but right now it just doesn't seem like you're in the right space hopefully we we see each other in the future but i would personally rip the band-aid off how about you i would too okay so we actually have time for one more and here we go I suffer from severe anxiety and recently found out I have depression and this year so far hasn't been the best. I've been re- I've been rear-ended and have had a flat tire all in less than a week and it has really gotten to my mental health. Do you have any advice on how to make a bad situation not so bad? Damn. A lot of people go through anxiety and depression I these think we days. all go through it, yeah. but the thing that... And I don't mean to to minimalize anything at all. This is just my own, how I approach it for myself for it to make sense to me. So I don't mean to offend anyone. I don't mean to minimalize what you're feeling or what you're experiencing. This is just how I view it for myself. But I noticed that for myself, when I put heavy emphasis on something that's happening to me negatively, then it becomes bigger for me. So if I start calling something Like, oh my God, I'm feeling anxious. I'm feeling anxiety. And I'm not talking about like if I had like chemical imbalances or any of that. Like I have felt depression and I have felt anxiety, but I don't sit with it. I don't say, oh, this is happening to me because of my anxiety. And I just sit there and I'm just going, okay, this is just my anxiety. Okay. Like it's okay to acknowledge that these things exist and it's okay to feel it out. But I don't like sitting with it and I don't like using it. And I'm not saying that this person at all is using it as a crutch. I'm just saying, again, for myself, um, I just go, oh, okay. So this is the anxiety people have talked about. Oh, fuck. I think I'm experiencing it. Okay. I need to get, I need to, I need to see what's triggering this. I need to see what is happening so that I can change it. I'm not, I don't want to sit on it and be like, okay, I'm feeling this way. And then I carry it with me everywhere. So like. For this example, and again, I don't mean to compare, but if I were in your situation, right? And again, I don't know what you're going through. 
Um, but if I were in your situation and I know I suffer from depression and anxiety and I get rear-ended, then knowing that I suffer from depression and anxiety, I'm going to try my very best to not look at that as it's the worst thing that has happened to me. Yeah, I think also like one thing I would also practice is uh, the I've talked about this on other podcasts, but like the good mentality, like, mm. good. So you someone ran into your car. Good. Now I get to take the train and see the city in a whole different way. And that's hard to do. It is it's very hard, real, especially because I've been depressed yeah, before. Yeah, yeah. It's the fucking hardest thing to see the light at the end of the tunnel. It's yeah. like, fuck, I was already having fucking the worst financial ever. I can't find a job. Like, it just seems like everything is compounded on yeah. each other. I get it. Yeah. Or good. Uh, I've been wanting to ride my bike to work, you know, and it's really hard to see it that way. But that's the only way you're going to be able to take steps and try to see things in a poor positive way and try to have a, a more positive effect on your mindset and your body. And also, even the way you worded it, it's uh, someone ran into my car, someone rear ended me instead of I got into an accident. So I think like the the phrasing of words and the phrasing of how things like are the script that you have in your it, head. It, it, it's really important because uh, one is. Um, I'm this thing that things always happen to all the time and it's out of uh, your control, which a lot of things are. But if you're this thing that the world is happening to all the time, then you're always going to feel helpless. And in order to 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 not feel anxious and, and to slowly climb out of the depression, you need to feel that you do have control of the of the of your world. So maybe even phrase, even stop, like catch yourself in that type of phrasing. Maybe be like, I got into an accident, you know, or the like, don't always say this happened to me. That happened to me. This like what what is what when you're writing a movie, when you're writing your movie, what is your character doing and how is this character going to move on from that? I got into an accident. Good. And now I get to see the world through the subway system. Yeah. And slowly that will help. Uh, at least that's what works for me. Like what works for me is sometimes I'm like, fuck, man, like why, why is this happening to me all the time? And if I start thinking about it, well, what are the things that that are in my control that probably caused those things to happen to me? And sometimes it takes a lot of deep thinking to figure that out because it's so it's 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 so hard to find the extra layers between what you think is between point a and point b you know because yeah. you feel like oh it's point a and then point b but there's actually a lot of extra steps that are like oh shit if i would have done that that wouldn't have happened yeah. or if i would have done this that would have been happened yeah when i was feeling <sighs> depressed uh for me it wasn't something that i could even pinpoint like i didn't understand what was happening to me um i never seeked out at that point i didn't seek out any professional help because i felt like things that I was doing was already me making me feel better. So uh. um, it was the wildest thing because I had never, um, I personally don't like labeling negative things because I feel like once I label something that's happening to me that's negative, then I feel like now I just gave it this power. Like you like officialized now, it. Yeah, like now I gave it a name, therefore it's a thing and it has a presence. Yeah. So I don't I don't like making things that important that are negative. Yeah. So uh, once I was feeling this depression, I didn't understand what it was and I remember talking to you about it and I'm like, I don't get what's happening to me. Like, I don't wanna get out of bed. I've never been this way, by the way, but I'm like, I, I can't muster up the courage it felt like I needed to get out of bed. Um, and then when I finally do get out of bed, I just want to cry the whole time. And I don't even know why, because it's not like there's this one thought or even like a handful of thoughts that I'm thinking about. Or even like one trigger. There's nothing. I couldn't tell you what it was, but I'm like, fuck, like, I'm just so sad and I want to cry all the time. And anything that would bring me joy before just doesn't bring me joy now. And I didn't even know how to get out of it. So the, the, the first thing I did was disrupt my routine. Because I'm like, okay, let me start with baby steps. What's something that I can do to change how I might possibly be feeling? Okay. Put, put ice cubes in your bathtub. That would be good. But I didn't do that. Um, mm. So I wanted to really disrupt my routine because I felt like something that I'm doing over and over again is causing this. It could have been chemical. Who knows? Maybe I could have been one of the, the, the lucky ones that it, like chemically something happened. And then it just kind of like readjusted itself. I do not know because, again, I didn't seek out professional help when it was help happening. But 
Uh, so the first thing I did was let me just disrupt this routine. So I never would really go out on just strolls and walks. So I started doing that. I started feeling the sun on my face. I started really trying to focus on things that I knew at least in the past would make me happy, which was like something simple like nature. You know, I'm like, okay, that makes me happy. So never go on walks. Let me just do 10 minutes. And I would do that. And I'm like, um, as hard as it was, and let me tell you, it was fucking hard to be like, okay, I want to hang out with friends. Cause that's the last thing I wanted to do was to get ready to have a conversation about again, because I'm depressed. I'm like, I have nothing to contribute. I have nothing to talk about, but it was like, I know that I love my friends and they make me feel good. So I'm like, okay, let me just have dinner with them. So then, uh, I would have dinner with them and like, I would just try to listen to them and just get their energy. So that helped me. Um, I even booked like an all girls trip because I was, I'm fortunate enough to have friends that support me and want nothing but the best for me that when I put this out there, they were like, hell yeah, we are so down. And I had never done that. I had never traveled without you. True. I only ever wanted to travel with you by my side. But for this one, I felt like, again, I need to disrupt my routine. Something needs to change. And I didn't know what it was. So then I did the girl trip and I had such a good time and I was able to like experience different parts of myself that I don't think I would have experienced with you in them yeah, or you are experiencing it with you, you know? So like, that was really cool. Um, so again, I don't know at what level of depression or, or what it is that you're feeling, but, um, that might be one of the things. The other one is saying like, what's the script that you're telling yourself? Is it, is the world happening at me or to me, you know, or for me, I should say. Um, that's super important. And I'm glad you really picked up on that wording because yeah, it it feels like she's, she, she's like, fuck, this happened to me again. This happened. Like there's always, there's always negative and a positive side. Like that's just how this whole world is created. Like even us as humans, like we have the yin, the yang, we have the male and the, the, the masculine and the feminine. Like there's, it's always, there's always a balance. So remind yourself about that when you're, um, and I'm not trying to solve your depression or your anxiety. Again, these are just things that um, might help in the meantime. Again, I would say seek professional help, which it sounds like uh, you have done because someone diagnosed you with it. So I think that's um, that's great. But um, just reminding yourself that, hey, with every negative comes a positive. Something as simple as what happens after it rains? There's a rainbow. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it sounds really childish and fucking basic bitch. But like that might even like like something might get triggered in your mind where you're like, that's true. After a storm, there's always something beautiful. Like the small gets cleared up. The sky looks way more blue. Like everything gets washed. Like there's that's, you know, like it, like, like good things happen, you know? And, um, one thing that my little sister was doing too, that I thought was really cool. She does like daily, um, affirmations, which is really cool. Like you're beautiful. People love you. You have a lot to offer. And like telling yourself these things, that's really dope. Or like incantations of like, um, you know, like I'm a force to be reckoned with. And like, I bring so much to the table or whatever, like repeating that to yourself. Like it really does something to your psyche. And, and, and it really like, even if you're not believing it, but like, just try to really like, like deliver it when you're saying these things, like you're like, you're going to trick your mind into like believing it. And then now you become that, um, doing that. And then at the end of the day, just start journaling some stuff. Like, just see like, what are some three things that were positive? Like, what are three things? Like I have a friend, a girlfriend right now who's doing it and she shares it online. Like on her Instagram story, she'll put three things that happened to her. And she does that every single day. And I think it's the coolest thing ever that she's even sharing it. And it's something as simple as I got to eat today. I'm like, that is fucking positive. You know what I mean? Like we take a lot of things for granted. We really do. Yeah. You know, or, hey, I had a job. Like, I still have a job. Like, it's, that's it. Or, like, my mom is still alive. Or um, so I have true. 10 fingers and 10 toes. That's so you true. You know, I have my vision. Like, it doesn't have to be something that's materialistic or something yeah. extravagant. Yeah. It's something that you're, that are, that's just positive in your life. Like, I have, I have four walls and a roof over my head. Yeah. That's awesome. I didn't so, get zapped by lightning today. Yeah, like, that's positive. So. I like what you're saying about the whole, like, uh, labeling things and giving it too much power and weight. Because I was listening to a speech by like a leading gerontologist. And what he was saying is um, the breakdown of the mind is called Alzheimer's, right? There's a name for it. The breakdown for the body, there is no name for it. So no one's crying 
when your grandpa or your grandma is starting to lose muscle mass and skeletal structure, you just go, oh, it's normal. It's aging. But all of a sudden you call something breakdown of the mind, Alzheimer's. There's so much like there's so much uh, power to it. So when they're when you're even though both are just as common and it's inevitable, uh, they just happen at different rates. Now, when your grandpa or grandma has Alzheimer's, you're like, oh, it's has Alzheimer's. You know, and it just feels so bad. Like because you can't even do anything. Yeah, because about you it. gave so much uh you gave so much weight and power to that. Whereas he so he actually doesn't even like that word. He's just like, oh, wow. Yeah, because he's like, the, why are we giving natural things these names that, that are just so strong that it's supposed to happen to anyone and everyone? And with you don't go, oh, my grandparents. It's a conspiracy, muscle, yeah, man. Muscle atrophy. You have to label shit no so that you can solve a problem, so you can sell them a solution. Yeah, like no one's. Oh, I hate no it. No one's crying over that, and so you feel different about that. Yeah, and so that's something that's really important. Like the more you label things, the more you empower other things. Sorry, I'm gonna sneeze. Uh oh. But the more you empower other things, and then the more you take the power away from yourself. Yeah. So again, um, I don't mean to minimalize anything. I don't, I don't mean, or we don't mean to oversimplify anything. We know that anxiety and depression is super complex and all, all we're trying to do is just, um, um, just share what has worked, at least for me, what has worked for you and trying to just kind of shed a perspective, you know, we're, we could be completely wrong. Um, we don't mean to offend anyone out there. Uh, take it with a grain of salt uh we aren't professionals we don't know you know what we're talking about like we're just exploring and with 30 something year olds that you know are just going through life and trying to figure shit out as we go you know um so if we were able to shed some light or give some new perspective that's awesome if not i would still recommend always 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 seek professional help because that's you know what they specialize specialize in and that's what they you know what they (sighs) practice and that's you know, they're, they're going to be the best source of information. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much for listening. That's, that's all the time we have for today. Uh, and thank you for supporting this. Like it's been some really positive feedback. I love that everyone's even reaching out to me personally to, um, to, to like submit more questions and stuff. Yeah. It's, it's been such a beautiful community and I'm so happy that you guys are enjoying it because I absolutely, or we absolutely enjoy doing this as well. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much for listening and stay tuned because for sure we definitely will be doing more of these and we'll, we'll start telling you guys where to submit stuff. But in the meantime, just stay patient with us. We're, we're, we're doing a lot of, uh, background work, but yeah, thank you so much. And thank you to our sponsors. So thank you to our sponsor, Noom. Go to noom.com slash bail, B-E-A-W. And thank you to Manscaped for 20% off and free shipping with code BAIL. Go to manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use code BAIL. And don't forget to check out me and Ma Bear's brand, barbellbrigade.com. We got you covered in supplements, the gym, and also dope fitness apparel. And we just dropped our cold weather gear to help you stay warm no matter where your training is, inside or outside. Go to barbellbrigade.com.